morning guys. It is Wednesday, December 6th and I just got in the room. I'm a little late coming in today. Not late by my standards. Instead of being here an hour and a half before school starts, I'm here an hour before school starts. So, but still, that's kind of late for me. Um, and it is cold outside. It is really, really cold outside. So, but we are supposed to get snow tomorrow, like like after school starts, and a little snow on Friday, and Sunday they're predicting three to six inches. Yay! Snow, bring on the snow. It's Christmas, gotta have the snow. So I am excited, the boys are excited. Casey already has you know the sled out and <laughs> ready to go. Um so yes. Good times. Um, so that's what's going on with Michigan weather. And unfortunately, we live on the east side of the state. Because if you actually lived on the west side of the state, because of Lake Michigan, they're supposed to get hammered with just tons and tons more snow than we're going to get. So, but that's okay. We're still going to get some because I really want a white Christmas. Water bottle. Remember to bring it today. Um... And I'm tired. This whole super mom thing, working mom thing, it's good, but it's exhausting. So, yeah, I gotta get some things done here. I am working late today, and they have dinner that's all taken care of. And I am excited today because I have, it's supposed to be coming from Amazon.com. I ordered a couple of things for my camera. I ordered a car mount so I can actually start to talk to you guys in the car because I spend an hour a day in the car commuting to work so I might as well talk to you once in a while while I'm in the car. So the car mount should be arriving today and I also bought another computer chip or not a computer chip, um, a camera scan disc. I bought a 32 gig blank one because the one I have in the camera right now it's full of a lot of bill stuff too so it's very easy for me to fill this chip because there's really not that much room left on it so I ordered a new one and it's only going to have my vlogging stuff on it none of bill stuff I kinda would like to get a new camera because this camera I'm using, and it's just a Nikon. We ordered it from, or we bought it from Costco. We get everything from Costco. So, but it's a Nikon one, and we've had it for a long time, because I know a lot of you ask me what camera I use. So it's a Nikon one. It's um, 10 30 millimeter. I'm reading the lens. So it's been a great camera. It's got 1080 HDI. Um, it does really well in, in recording photographs, but one of the drawbacks is it's not the best camera in low light. So I would love to get a new camera that's exceptional in low light because my house, even though we have windows everywhere, for some reason my house always seems to be dark in the videos. So I would love to get a camera that excels in lower light and I would love to get one. The speaker on this camera actually died about probably three months ago I just used the holy heck out of this camera so I would love to get a camera with a new a working speaker again I just can't swing that right now now with the holidays and full gear and you know I just got the new laptop for the vlog so yeah things cost money but at least the car mount was like ten dollars off amazon.com and then the new computer or camera chip was sixteen dollars off Amazon. I love Amazon Prime. Love Amazon Prime. So that's what's going on right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here because I gotta get a few things done before my kiddos arrive. I managed to get my learning targets up on the wall. We are a school that has the uh, blackboard configuration in here, the BBC, but I don't have a blackboard. I just have that one teeny tiny whiteboard and I cannot put my learning targets up there and leave the posted all day on my one and only whiteboard. So I think I may have showed this before, but I do my learning targets on butcher paper on a big uh, chart pad. 
and every day I just tear that one off and slap up a new one and get that one going and then I did my morning message so here is today's morning message we have wise words Wednesday and part of the blackboard configuration is having your do now so they want you to have a do now the minute the students walk in the door so right now on their desks well not desks but tables there's a post-it note at every table so when the children come in the room they'll hang up their stuff take their homework to their seats collect their breakfast eat breakfast at their table read the board and do a little written response to whatever is the morning message. Then they'll talk about it with each other at their tables and then after breakfast is over we'll spend like a minute or two raising hands and sharing with the whole room what they think the morning message is about and build off each other's ideas. So that's what we do with the morning message in there. One question that has come up a lot is how do I celebrate Christmas in the classroom, considering my diverse pop, um, population in here? And I will be honest, I don't make a big deal about Christmas in the classroom. I do ask the children every year, do you want a little decorated tree in the room? And if one child objects, the tree does not go up. But every year, for the most part, the children they always want it because even the children who are Muslim you know they like the lights they like the, the tree itself they may not understand the religious connotations and they don't really care about the religious connotations they just think it's pretty and so that's why I do have a little tree up in here and we will make stockings in here just out of like construction paper um, I have a big pattern that they'll trace an old-fashioned tracing pattern and we'll cut out two big red socks and glue them together on the edges and put a big white topper on top and then I glitter the heck out of those things. I've learned in 20 years of teaching do not give the kids the glitter. <laughs> the teacher does the glittering. So I will glitter the heck out of the stockings and make them sparkly and pretty but other than that we don't really do a lot in here with Christmas. Um, we do talk about it, but we also talk about Ramadan, we talk about Eid, we talk about Hanukkah, we talk about Kwanzaa, we talk about all of these things because I definitely want this to feel like an inclusive classroom. I can't just talk about Christmas to a classroom that's predominantly Muslim. So that's how I do that in here. And then our big party just before we leave for winter break, it's not a Christmas party it is a pajama day party and so it's actually one of my favorite days of the year um, I, I have an annual pajama party every December and the kids will come in their pajamas all day they will bring one stuffed animal from home and the stuffed animal must be small enough to fit in their backpack please do not bring the four foot tall you know Tweety Bird that you won at the festival <laughs> you know, it's got to fit in the backpack and then they'll also bring a couple of books from home and we'll you know spread out on the floor and read the books and maybe we'll even get in like a circle and do a book talk where the children will talk about their favorite book and why they like it and so it's a really fun day we'll have milk and cookies and other treats that the parents will send in from home and it's just a lot of fun it really really is so but again because I've, I've had a couple of people you know what, I'm not going to go there. I don't want to go there because I love all my children and I hope you guys all love my children too. School's over for the day. The kids have gone home and I'm working late as I said I was going to. And right now I'm actually working on, le I have two big things I need to do today. One, I need to work on lesson plans. Two, I need to get my sub plans down for tomorrow because I have my math class. So that's the two big things I have to do. I'm also trying to grade some papers before I leave. I'm trying to get a lot of things done. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're thinking, Tina, you can do all those things at home. And it's true. I can. But a lot of times, if you're a mom, 
You know what I'm talking about. We take all these things home to do them, but then we see a pile of laundry sitting in the corner, and one of our kids needs help with their homework, and another kid has to run to the store because they need something and they have to have it for tomorrow, and they just remembered to tell you. Or you get sidetracked, and suddenly you're on the internet and you're Christmas shopping, you know. There's a million and one things that will distract me at home. So a lot of times when I do schoolwork at home, Home, I don't really even get to it until like 8 o'clock at night. So then from like 8 until 9.30 I'm doing schoolwork literally until I go to bed. So I'm here today. I'm not even thinking about home. I'm not thinking about Christmas shopping. I just got work to do and that's what I'm going to do. Gosh darn it. So I'm going to turn the camera around and kind of show you how I'm working on my lesson plans, all the different things I'm pulling into. I've actually pulled out my Erin Condren teacher planner and I'm going to use this to do like my rough outline of my lessons and then I'll take this data and pop it into the computer. I think it'll actually be a lot faster that way as opposed to writing them on the computer and then trying to transfer them onto this. So we are almost done with the story Mr. Shockey and oh my god the kids today were like Miss Beitler don't stop don't stop keep reading and they were beyond excited and they just wanted to hear the rest of the story but I was like nope nope you gotta wait for tomorrow so I have with Mr. Shockey how much do I have left I should be able to finish it Friday Yes, so I will definitely finish Mr. Shockey on Friday, which is good. So that means Monday I want to work on this anchor chart setting. Initially, I wasn't going to do this one, but I decided to go ahead and work on the anchor chart setting because one of the things that happens in this story is there's a time lapse where the story fast forwards 20 years. And there's also a part in the story where you find out that 30 days have gone by. And so I like that. And that's something I want to address in the setting, and it's also something I want to show them how to do in the writer's workshop. I want to incorporate that as well. So for Monday, my first focus lesson is going to be working on creating the setting anchor chart. All right. And this will probably, because this is a little on the big side, I don't know if we can finish this in 10 minutes and talk about it. I'll probably do this part in the first focus lesson and then finish that on the second focus lesson. And then round one will be read to self. And round two will be choice round. All right. So this is what I want to focus on Tuesday. And we've already worked on character traits this week. I will be starting the new book here, new story, um, the Bluebeard Man, so my read aloud is The Bluebeard Man. And that one is the fairy tale. For the second day, we're going to want to start talking about fairy tales and we'll have a short talk where we will talk about the differences between the two stories. Okay, one is a fairy tale and the other is a fantasy 
slash realistic fiction. Okay, round one, read to self. Round, and then um, second focus lesson. <clears throat> I want to, actually the second focus lesson is when I want to start introducing some of the reading logs. I, I wish I had copies here. I thought the PRC would be delivering them today. They have not arrived. They should probably be here tomorrow or Thursday. But so I'm going to introduce this one. And this is writing reading responses. So, and this is for our in-class reading responses. So the children are actually going to have two reading response booklets. One booklet will be responding to their own reading that they're doing for read to self, but this one is actually going to be the book that's being read in class. So for next week we would actually write the title um, The Bluebeard Man and I can't think of the rest of the name of the story right now. I'm having a brain fart. And then the author and then we would write the date after I finish reading. We read from pages here to here. And then the students will craft their own responses to the reading. But before I just set them loose to write, we would look at the chart they're going to get. Okay? So, what did we read? You know, tell what a character said. Tell what a character did. Tell what a character thought or felt. Describe the setting. Describe an important event that occurred. Um, what did you think? This made me think. This made me realize. Based on this, I can infer. So there's a, a setup here of how I want them to approach doing their reading response. And honestly, we might even do the first one as a whole group just so they, they know how to do it and then starting the next time they're free to do it on their own. So for the second focus lesson, um, model in class reading responses. All right, and then round two would be choice. And again, we would be reading the same book probably every day this week until we finish it, because even though it's a short story, it till, still takes a little while to get through it. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing there. And if I come back to you know my um, Common Core, you know I can see here that uh, RL 4.3 is describe in depth a character, setting, or event in a story or drama, drawing on specific details in the text. Character's thoughts, words, and actions. So everything we've been doing this week on character traits, everything I want to start doing next week with the setting, everything we're doing with, you know, including in-class reading responses to the read aloud will all address this common core right here. And then the next day, focus lesson, the next day is actually going to start off with a little bit more modeling. Uh, they're going to have their reading book log where they're going to start recording their information of what they're reading. They're also going to get their reading wish list on Wednesday, so this way as they see children reading other books or when they're doing read to partners and like, oh, I want to read that book when you're done, they can start recording the books that they want to keep track of. So we will model um, book log. Okay. Wish list. and then their individual response book. Round one, read to self. Okay. 
Okay. And then second focus lesson, I'm actually going to leave this one blank because by the time I read our read aloud and do all this, I can see some of this seeping into the second focus lesson. So I think I'm probably going to need both of these focus lessons to do the read aloud and model these things with the students. So then round two will be the choice round. <clears throat> so this is how I'm just going through these things. Um, by the time we get to Oh, I am doing this wrong. I am so used to now doing my lesson planning on plan book that I've been going across instead of going down. Son of a gun. <laughs> wow. Okay. That really bites. But that is not a problem. I Can you tell I'm out of practice writing lesson plans in my plan book? We will simply do this. Post-it note there, post-it note there, and I will put these going down. That is a bummer. So by Thursday, focus lesson, we will be very close to finishing the Bluebeard Man, and at that point, I really want to address point of view with the students because Mr. Shockey is told in a first person point of view and it's Tyler telling the entire story everything that happens in the story is as Tyler sees it, hears it, experiences it and thinks about it whereas um, the Bluebeard Man is third person omnipotent. You have a narrator who knows all, sees all, tells what every character is thinking. So that is a big difference in point of view. So for Thursday, we will start the anchor chart. Point of view. after doing our read aloud and then again by the time I do the read aloud I can see this going into the second focus lesson as well complete personal anchor chart okay and then round one Read to self. Round two. Choice. So by the time we get to Thursday, we will have covered setting, point of view, and I am missing one. Where is my character analysis? Hmm. Missing an anchor chart. Oh, bet's over here. There we go. So, by Thursday we'll have covered these parts of reading literature. Character analysis, setting, and point of view. And then Friday, um, I'm not going to do Friday just yet because I am thinking that I might do some kind of holiday related activity right here. So I'm actually going to leave this blank for the moment and come back to that one. And so now what I kind of need to do is transfer this information over, which I'm not going to make you watch me do that. So hopefully this is giving you a glimpse of how I do my lesson plans. We don't really have what you would call a, a teacher's guide for reading in our district. We basically have the Common Core and we have materials and it's up to us to kind of arrange those materials, put them in an order and 
construct our own lesson plans trying to meet the needs of the students and their language issues as well as meeting the Common Core. And it can be really exhausting sometimes because it would almost be easier if there was just a reading book. <laughs> Honestly, it would. But at the same time, I kind of like doing things this way. One, it's what I'm used to. It really is in my district. I've been on my own for so long that it's just, it's what I'm used to. And it really allows your creativity to flourish. So I'm going to stop right there because I kind of want to knock out a few more lesson plans before I head home today and if I can I'll pop in just before I leave to show you my sub plans for tomorrow and some of the other stuff I've done. I managed to finish all the work I was going to do tonight except for grading the papers. Um, I ended up blowing up my um, stability balls again and whoo forgot just how much arm pressure that took. I had to deflate the stability balls when I had to use that back table as an actual sitting table for students. But I had a student move away, so that brought my numbers down that I could fit my whole class back at the five main tables so that I can now use that back table as a resource again as opposed to seating. So that's what I was doing there. I did a little tidying up around the room and I have my sub plans all laid out right here. Here's my sub plans for tomorrow. You should recognize this. And they have some math sheets in there. Uh, time for kids with a matching worksheet in there. And then here's the daily five read aloud for the sub. And then I need the sub tomorrow to cut out, have the students in their math books cut out all their fraction circles. This cutting out of the circles, I swear, last year and the year before, getting those circles cut out and then putting their name on the back of each piece took like an hour. <laughs> it's like, good lord, this is taking forever. So, you know what? I thought that is a perfect thing to have a sub do. They'll cut it out when the sub is here, cut the pieces apart, write their names on the backs of the pieces, and put them in their little Ziploc baggies and call it a day. So that's going to happen tomorrow. I am also leaving out the attendance for the sub, the breakfast count for the sub, here's the class roster, some referrals so should kids get sick, and some referrals should some of my munchkins decide to misbehave. So that's all set up. I'm also taking my plan book home with me tonight because I do plan on doing some more grading tonight even once I get home and I'm going to want to use the checklist in the back of my planner to record the grades because we took several tests today plus I never graded our spelling test that we took on Friday. So I need to get those graded too. Yeah, I admit it, just like everybody else, I fall behind in grading. So, but I'm trying to really, really, really stay on top of things because with the holidays and we have the big party this weekend and we want to see Fantastical Beast on Sunday. I want to make sure that I am on the ball and that I'm not pushing all this work into my weekend when I already know I'm going to have like zero time this weekend. So that's why the late night tonight and taking work home every day this week. But with that, I do think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's vlog right here because I'm pretty sure once I go home today, I'm just going to want to chill out, maybe have a little glass of wine, grade my papers, and watch something absolutely mindless and brainless on the TV. Time for a Netflix binge. So I hope you enjoyed today's Vlogmas. I, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from you in the future, click that subscribe button. And I'll talk to you later.